an organization that began in 2004, a little over seven years ago, rallied a cadre of partners to engage in educational, legal, and social advocacy to eliminate domestic violence. Sitting here with me today are guests from three of those organizations, Bridges to Safety, St. Paul Intervention, and Southern Minnesota Regional Legal Services. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, uh, Danielle, Bridges to Safety is a, an organization consisting of 18 different um, agencies that come together to end domestic violence. Can you talk about how it began, why it began, just kind of give us a brief history? A group of folks from the county attorney's office, um, from the Ramsey County Court, um, from St. Paul Intervention Project, and um, Southern Minnesota Regional Legal Services got together really to ask one question, and that was how can we serve victims of domestic violence better? What can we do in Ramsey County? Everyone had been partnering together for years on different projects, but what can we do? And one of the things that very quickly emerged was that for victims of domestic violence, we ask a lot of them. We tell them, you need to talk to the police, and then you need to go to this office of the court, and then you need to go to another office to see an advocate. Now you need to go to a fourth to see an attorney. And oftentimes for victims, that's a very big burden on them. They're busy people, they're, living, they're in danger, you know, they have children. We wanted to make it as simple as possible for them and to bring all of these partners together in one spot called a Domestic Abuse Service Center where a victim could come and get services from multiple partners. So the group got together, started working and talking about how could we do this, bringing other partners on board, such as the St. Paul Police, St. Paul City Attorney's Office, all of the advocacy programs in Ramsey County. Um, they surveyed victims all over Ramsey County and what, what do you need for services? And very quickly it did emerge that a domestic abuse service center would be born and so then for several years, we got support, for example, from St. Paul Mayor Chris Coleman, who donated our office space to us rent-free for 10 years. And then in uh, the summer of 2008, after some very hard work from our partners, we were able to open our doors to start serving victims. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, it was a really exciting yeah, day. Yeah, great. I, so I understand that you're all housed in um, City Hall, St. Paul City Hall. Our collaborating organizations that are all part of the Partnership for Domestic Abuse Services, which is the group that oversees Bridges to Safety. Um, it's all of the advocacy programs in Ramsey County, so it's the St. Paul Domestic Abuse Intervention Project, Women of Nations, Casa de Esperanza, Asian Women United of Minnesota, mm -hmm. Women's Advocates, Outfront Minnesota, have, and Tubman. Then we also have on site, we have the St. Paul Police Department, St. Paul City Attorney's Office, and um, the Ramsey County Attorney's Office. We also have family law attorneys from the Southern Minnesota Regional Legal Services on site. We also have other partners who don't, aren't necessarily, oh, and then we also have clerks from the Ramsey County Court Domestic Abuse and Harassment Office so that a victim can come to our office and file for an order for protection on site, which mm -hmm. is really very helpful. Then we have other partners who aren't necessarily on site all the time, but um, help us in our collaborative work and making sure that we're serving the needs of the community, and that includes Ramsey County Probation, um, Children's Safety Centers. I, I know I'm forgetting some. Do you guys want to jump in with this? I think yeah. that you had. I think okay. most of our <laughs> if I've forgotten okay. any, I hope that they do forgive us. But we yeah. are located on site, and once again, we really we think of ourselves as being. Uh, uh, almost like a shopping mall of domestic violence yeah. help, yeah. which That's is great. just very helpful and very yes. um, efficient way yeah. to serve victims. And it's also great all of us working together because it's really strengthened our relationships okay. as partners. Yeah. Now, what kind of advice could you give a person who may be in an abusive relationship? Um, what kind of advice can you offer to someone who may be trapped in a relationship um, or friends or family that may see somebody who's trapped in that type of relationship? Um, I think I'll start with the friends and family first mm -hmm. in that the best thing that you can do um, if you know somebody that um, you care about that's in an abusive relationship is to, for one, listen to them, um, believe them, and know that they are the experts to their situation, meaning that they would know best when it's safe to leave if they want to leave. Um, and I think um, the fourth piece of that is then just offering them um, an agency, a local battered women's agency or domestic violence agency um, to offer them that information just so that they have uh, supportive outreach, um, someone they can go to should they need that support. But really for family and friends it's about believing the victim, being supportive, 
um, and, and just being there when they need them. Okay. Um, for a victim themselves, um, I, would, I would mimic a little bit of what I just said is that um, first and foremost, the most courageous thing we say as advocates that they can do is reach out for help. It is the most courageous thing they can do. Mm -hmm. Whether that be calling a 24-hour crisis line in the middle of the night, whether they give their name or not, whether it's calling the police, whether it's obtaining an order for protection. Um, there are multiple things that, um, multiple um, help and resources out in the community, but oftentimes victims don't know that they exist. And there are, again, many reasons why they may not know that they exist. And a lot of that could come from just the manipulation of the batterer and isolating the victim. So um, advice for a victim is um, to reach out for help um, and support should they need it and should they feel that they need it. Our biggest thing is we want them to know mm -hmm. that we exist, agencies like ours exist, um, and that we are accessible to them should they choose. Okay, wonderful. And it's very important, you can't stress enough, very important, friends, family, if you see it, call and um, some get some help. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and if they need some advice on how to talk to someone, they can always call us at Bridges to Safety yeah. um, and we'd be happy to talk to them okay. about that. Perfect. Um, Rebecca, now you are a senior attorney, let me get this right, at Southern Minnesota Regional Legal Services. Now what role does the legal services have um, in all this? Well, I think legal services plays a critical role in domestic violence cases. Mm -hmm. Studies have identified access to legal services as uh, the single greatest predictor of the success of victims remaining violence free in their lives. Specifically at Bridges, uh, we as legal services providers, we meet with eligible clients, we uh, try to answer their immediate legal questions, we assess them for long-term representation in their legal cases, and then we also collaborate with other providers um, to conduct trainings, outreach, and then connect victims to other resources at Bridges. Okay. And now, legal services, we know it, it can be a little expensive. Do you offer um, any type of help or any kind of um, um, monies for victims that can't afford it? Well, what we do is we provide free legal help in certain types of civil legal cases. We don't represent in criminal cases at all. We do have limited financial resources that are getting more limited every okay. day, yeah. um, and so we're unable to take all of the critical legal needs where people really need our help. It's always a balance of resources versus mm -hmm. need. Um, we have to make sure clients are financially eligible for our services. They have to be low income. Their legal case has to be a type of legal, ca legal case we handle. Um, and then we also evaluate the specific legal case and make sure it has merit. Okay. Okay. Now, I understand that um, your need is actually greater than what you have. Do you take attorneys? Um, uh, do you need volunteers or um, anything like that? And then, if so, what do they need to do to? come in? Sure, because again of our limited financial resources mm -hmm. we do try to utilize volunteer attorneys, pro bono attorneys as much as we possibly can. Um, we do, it can be difficult with domestic abuse cases because they can come up really quickly and volunteer attorneys don't always have the time to move their schedules around and take uh, hearings. Um, you know, on a one-day notice. We have a new initiative with Briggs & Morgan, a law firm, and they have recently volunteered to take some order for protection cases from us. It has been a great success. And then we have uh, a volunteer attorney program within our office that handles all types of legal cases, and if someone would want to volunteer to do that, they would just need to contact our, our office, um, or they can also access our website, and the information is on our website, too. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, Bree, there is, um, the issue of domestic violence has, has grown tremendously in the last 40 years. Um, why do you think that persists? That's an interesting question, and um, how to answer, answer that is that I don't know that it's increased. Mm -hmm. I think that in the last 40 years, um, the Better Women's Movement, along with many other movements, have um, done a great job at making it safe for victims to come forward and making it um, making our services as well as our collaborations with law enforcement, um, different systems, um, making it safe for them to come forward. Um, I think a lot of it really has to do with the fact that we are addressing the issue um, on the societal level mm -hmm. and we are collaborating with um, many people um, because this is an issue that affects everybody. So one in four women still remain to be um, a victim of domestic violence, mm -hmm. um, but why I think we're seeing more attention today is because we're making really good strides in, mm -hmm. in attacking this epidemic um, and putting in place really good protocols and procedures. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, one of it, it states on your um, website that your one of your goals is to change societal values and structures that foster violence against women. Um, what are some of the things that the organization is doing, and what do you aspire? What do you? What is your goal? Um, well, I, I would say our ultimate goal is to end domestic violence. Yep. Um, and some ways that we do that, our agency at St. Paul Intervention Project, um, we do multiple things, but we have two um, goals. The first is providing quality, supportive, confidential, direct services to victims of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. No doubt. The second goal is also to provide um, what we call systems advocacy. What that is, is working with different systems. And when I say that, I don't mean just law enforcement and the city attorneys and prosecutors mm -hmm. and the county. I mean, I, across the state, that's health providers, um, health professionals, if you will, in training them and giving them really good information on why this issue is an epidemic mm -hmm. so that they can create really good protocols and responses to um, victims of domestic violence. We work with victims of domestic violence. There are neighbors, there are sisters, there are mothers, there are you know, our teachers. And so we want to create relationships, which is really important, and, coll and collaborate with folks um, in this in society so that we can together um, end domestic violence. Okay. Does that answer your question, yeah. Yep, yep, that does. Um, you mentioned St. Paul Intervention. We talked about that. What is their role in, in the collaboration? What is their actual role? It's a very important role, yeah. and that is that um, we are a collaboration of 18 agencies, and we are bound together by an interagency agreement and a long history of working together. St. Paul Intervention is actually our fiscal agent, which means that when we apply for grants or um, other things that we apply under their name, under their 501c3 nonprofit status, and then they are also our employment agent, um, which means that everyone who actually works for Bridges to Safety, including me, is technically a St. Paul Intervention um, employee. And then I think the most important role that they play is, first of all, that they are active members of our collaborative and that they provide advocacy services at Bridges to Safety more than 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge commitment to do that pro bono for us. Um, and we really appreciate the, the leadership role that St. Paul Intervention has taken. Okay. In making Bridges to Safety a reality. Yeah. Now, Bridges to Safety, who are some of their supporters and um, financial sponsors? Well, I think our first of all, our most important um, supporter and sponsor is our member programs because each and every one of them provides their services on site mm -hmm. pro bono. And as we all know, this funding climate is everybody is stretched incredibly thin. So for our partners to be able to do that is huge. Um, our other major funders, most of our funding comes from private foundations. We are funded by the Greater Twin Cities United Way, um, by the St. Paul Foundation, by the Bigelow Foundation, um, and then we are also funded by generous folks out there who really believe in our mission and our vision and what we're doing to help victims of domestic violence. Okay. Now, I think you talked about some of the services, but are there some services that you would like everybody to know? Um, that you provide that you didn't talk about? Are there? You know, I would just like to say um, how, uh, how it might be for um, a victim of domestic violence coming down to the service center Bridges of Safety because mm -hmm. when a victim comes down to Bridges of Safety, um, immediately will be connected with an advocate. And that advocate can do multiple things such as navigating through the criminal justice system mm -hmm. if there is um, a, a domestic case. Um, navigate through family court issues if 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 there one needs um, to address custody or um, dissolution um, and also assist in um, orders for protection but not only that advocates can be conduits to all the other partners there so for instance if when an av when a victim comes on to bridges of safety she might be connected with the advocate mm -hmm. and then that advocate will connect with law enforcement right there on site to say she wants to make a police report. Okay. We'll um, connect with um, Southern Minnesota Regional Legal Services with an attorney that's on site there to say, can, is she eligible for your services? Can you speak with her and help her with her case? Okay. Um, go connect with the Children's Safety Center to say, you know, supervised visitation might be an option. And so 
the beautiful thing about Bridges to Safety is that she only has one place to go. Where Danielle was speaking earlier, how we've asked a lot of victims have a lot of responsibilities to go multiple places. She can just, she or he, that victim can come down to Bridges to Safety and hopefully have most, if not all, of their needs met at that time. Okay. Now, do you have any um, other events coming up or anything you'd like to add? Well, I, what I wanted to add about Bridges to Safety is, first of all, that um, what's so wonderful about it is that it's really a warm, friendly um, environment where anyone will feel comfortable. We try to provide languages or provide services that are specific to a number of languages and different cultures, people of different sexual orientations and gender expressions. We really the people we serve are the people of St. Paul. It's it's just amazing to see the diversity of the the women and children that we serve at Bridges to Safety. Yeah. And we just want to make it really clear to folks that they should feel welcome to come if they need help or if they want to contribute. And by that I mean just coming down and taking a tour, finding out what we're all about, if they'd like to volunteer or they'd like to contribute, you know, financially to yeah. what we're doing. We really want Bridges to Safety. Bridges to Safety is a organization that we really want to be part of the community. Okay. It's very important. So thank you all for um, all the work that you're doing on domestic violence. It's really definitely needed. Um, and thank you also for coming to the show. Thanks, thank Georgia. You. Thank you, Georgia. Thanks so much.